Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, starting to work here on the hoses for the intercooler. Um, you know, nothing like getting some fresh brand new hoses and the first thing you have to do is cut into them. Um, but, well, eh, follow the instructions. Um, these actually weren't too bad. Uh, it took a little bit of time to get the initial cut made, but once you got it going, um, the knife seemed to kind of go through it. Uh, sharp knife is definitely in order for this because those are pretty heavy duty. Um, I would expect there's probably quite a bit of uh, pressure um, within these tubes because it's just all part of the turbo and cooler connections. Um, so I was a little, uh, the one thing you want, at least I try not to do, uh, or at least that I typically do, I typically cut too much and th then it's a problem. But so I've sort of reversed that process and I'm trying to be more conservative with my cuts. Um, and this is actually the air filter box that I was working on as well. Um, so I'm trying to cut in just a little bit at a time as opposed to not being as aggressive. And um, in getting that cut, I didn't quite cut enough. And you'll see here in a little bit. Um, started working on the sensors for the air box and uh, wanted to make sure that I got uh, some epoxy in there to keep the rib nuts because there's a couple of rib nuts you have to add to it. Uh, get those squared away. Um, and these are just some connections for one of the uh, under, other coolers that go into it. Um, I'm working on getting the overflow for the oil. Uh, it's not for the oil, for the coolant, the engine coolant uh, squared away. Um, this one was interesting because the, you know, the process is, is you pinch both sides of this uh, permanent connector or semi-permanent connector. Um, there's just simply no way to pinch the other side. Um, it, it, there's no way to put the wrench in there. There's no no pinching process because there's there's no access from the other side, no matter how you cut it. Um, and then the other part that I thought was interesting was the part that they identified. Um, I clearly had the right part. There was no way it was going to go onto that connector. Um, I couldn't get it on like outside the connection. And uh, I know it's got to be tight, but. Um, I actually wound up using a, a slightly larger connection and then crimping it down real well. So we'll see if that works. Um, I also started working on some of the uh, interior for the center console. And uh, this is, I equate this to wrapping Christmas presents. Um, uh, it's very diff for me this is the, the hard part because um, it's something that everybody's going to see in the end. Um, I want to make sure that it looks really good and um, this is just you know you're gluing and then it's got to be done pretty quick and uh it, it's it just gets really really challenging uh especially because the instructions just literally are like here's the parts laid out and here's the parts that it goes to laid out and there's there's nothing discussed as far as technique or uh suggestions on how to do it um so uh i just you know, sometimes with this build stuff is you have to just kind of plot on and, you know, think through it and use your best judgment as part of that process. Um, one of the other things that I did as part of this was uh, I wanted to, the, there's a Velcro that keeps the front portion of that armrest down. And uh, what I didn't want to do is just rely upon the sticky adhesive portion of the Velcro to keep that in place. Because if you pull up on it, it's just going to pull that Velcro eventually. So I wound up match drilling the Velcro uh, to rivet the Velcro down as well as the adhesive portion of it. So I've got a mechanical and a chemical bond there. Um, I got the connections for the fuel pumps on uh, all together. And so it was time to put that Rotex uh, cover plate back on. Um, plus, uh, you know, kind of helps keep the, the wires in place because they do want to kind of pull forward a little bit. Um, so we're back over to the intercooler here. Uh, it's just another shot of the um, the directions for it. Um, the idea on this is that you you take the part that's in my left hand there and attaching it to a slight turn that allows you to move the location for the intercooler. And if you go if you look at like this tr standard Rotex um, marketing material, it shows this intercooler actually on the top portion. Uh, over the engine mount, not on the side like this. So um, I think this is just you know how Sling uh, has managed to engineer this this part, uh, so it's got good ventilation. Um, you know, as I dig into this, I'm I'm 
kind of okay that connection can be removed and then this connection like right there uh, the bottom portion of that it I needed to rotate it slightly just so that the hose would f kind of fall into place correctly um, so I eventually figured out that I could actually just attach it and reattach it once it's straightened out and once I got that done then I could uh, actually reattach that back in there and get it squared away and uh, I actually wound up using the wrong connection initially um, and then once I sorted out the spacing and whatnot I was able to get it connected um, this is not mounted into place as of yet I was missing a part that I needed to uh, to get that done and actually that came in the mail today um, so I'll be able to play with that a little bit more um, you know this is just a little bit of a trial and 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 whatnot uh, and I was watching some of Evan's uh, build videos the other day and realized that you know his suggestion was to get the cowling all installed before finishing the install on this fortunately this is not like a final install for this even though I have put the uh, hose clamps on uh, the hose clamps can are easy to take off and, and I can easily just take it right back off and, and get it out of the way because with the, the the cowling coming on and off uh, several times to get a really good fit um, I you know it, it'll be in the way as part of that process so um, I'm sure there's a whole uh, another level of work that I'm gonna have to do around this um, but I'm just sort of eyeballing make sure that it's out of the way um, I think that there's a part that so that part right there I believe that there's a second part that goes in between it and the radiator or the intercooler um, but I'm not I, I'm gonna have to take a look at it here today now that I've got all the parts um, the uh, air box here for the turbo inlet uh, this this took a little bit of finesse to get it all on there um, the one thing I didn't like about it was that there's a hose that comes across the top of it and um, it it's definitely tight and there's no additional give in that hose uh, I checked with another builder and he said yeah you know that's that's kind of normal so hopefully it's not going to be something that rubs or something and I'm just connecting the other half of the uh, the radiator overflow there um, I'm starting to work on the uh, oil cooler here or the air radi oil radiator um, there is a uh, fairly large uh, socket that you would need to get in order to be because there are torque values for a lot of these parts and they're all unique to each of those locations and it is outlined in the manual um, so I wound up going out and buying a uh, larger socket to fit the, the, the bolt attachments there and um, uh, get those torqued down correctly. Uh, a while ago I had put some uh, click bond mounts uh, to secure the uh, brake lines in place and I just didn't get a good mixture on it. So the, the click bond didn't bond. Um, it clicked but it didn't bond. Um, so I had to wait. Uh, I, I was just going to get around to it eventually and uh, I needed to buff off the old click bond that remained to get a nice clean surface again and uh, get those mounted back on so that's what I was doing there um, and if you've watched uh, any of Evan's videos which which hopefully you have at this point in time um, he talks about how tight it gets in the uh, footwell effectively of the the below the instrument panel and there's no real good way to crawl in there and work on it uh, w without laying on top of the uh, the control rod uh, mount at the bottom of the uh, the, fuse, the center fuselage there and I found out the hard way that yeah it's kind of painful when you do that because um, I actually wound up hurting myself a little bit uh, bruised my one of my uh, ribs uh, laying on that while I was trying to get some work done so to avoid that in the future um, what I did was I built a, a, a little makeshift table that basically uh, spans between the uh, center spar or the wing spar there and just forward of the control rod connection so I can just set that into place and I actually used it the other day um, it's it makes it a whole lot easier to get under there and do some work it's still really tight there's there's just not a lot of room um, I mean you almost need like a two or three year old child that has uh, you know a lot of strength to be able to get under there and work um, but <laughs> that's not going to work either so I have to come up with a solution so this was my solution to it um, it works out pretty well um, it allows me to crawl, lay down 
and uh, you know get access underneath. I knew that I was going to need that because uh, as I'm waiting on the uh, fuel connectors, that is um, uh, I'm going to need access underneath there. Um, so this actually goes back a little bit further um, to when I was starting to work on getting the layout done, and you can see there the uh, the, the that's the picture of what the layout is for the um, uh, the center console uh, interior makeup. Um, it's it, <laughs> it's almost like a uh, it's a puzzle that's for sure. Um, I laid it all out. I kind of figured out what was going on. The other thing that also is interesting is is that I completely assembled the uh, center console there, and in all reality, you should wait to put that center um, top portion on because uh, that has to be uh, separate from the rest of it. So, you know, just some quick drills to remove the um, that center top portion piece and then to get that done. And um, this is always the fun part. Um, nothing like going out and buying a brand new engine and then one of the things you have to do is actually, like, take off part of the muffler st stack there. Um, and again, much uh, like I was mentioning earlier, I'm trying to be conservative about how much I cut and where I cut, especially when it gets to something that could cost a lot of money. Um, you know, if you damage the muffler, um, it potentially is like, okay, well, I got to buy a new muffler. Um, and you know, I read the instructions several times and was like, I, you, man, this is just crazy cutting this, this off. So what I was initially trying to do was, uh, to grind off the weld at the base of where the angle brackets at. Um, just right where the, the tip of that, that grinder piece is. Um, there's a, probably a eighth inch or, or, or so uh, bead of weld that's at that tip. And uh, my thinking was, is, oh, okay, well, if I grind that tip off, then I can get, get access to underneath. That didn't work. So uh, back to the Dremel. And uh, quite frankly, I mean, I kind of joke that uh, these airplanes get built by Dremel because um, I, I, I've used this tool so much. Um, so anyway, so I got that piece cut off and, uh, I was like, okay, well, this is, you know, that's what I need. Now I got to figure out how to get the weld off from the remaining stack and that angle bracket that we can see, uh, here at the beginning. Um, it took, I went back and I, I looked at the instructions again and the, the latest set of instructions that are online actually were a little bit more clear than the paper ones that I had. And there's actually a, a, a measurement from the very base of the muffler to uh, just about the base of the, um, the angle iron or the angle bracket there on the muffler that needs to be trimmed off. Um, and that worked great. Um, basically, once I trimmed off about another maybe three quarters of an inch of the, uh, the, the muffler stack itself, um, it freed up enough room that I could then take the... Uh, uh, fuel, the new new exhaust valve and um, work it into place. So um, it you know took a little bit, but once I got it on there, then it, it fits on just right. Um, I'm very happy with how much is left over. Um, I wanted to make sure that the there's there's some relief cuts on the the muffler extension that you replace it with, and uh, if you um, don't have a, a longer, a long enough piece on the existing muffler or the re remaining muffler. Um, there's a potential for some leakage around that that area. Um, I don't have that. Uh, it's great. I slid slid it on all the way. The relief cuts you can't see anything but the the, the remaining muffler, and um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the the secure portion of it. Um, the next step is is that there's two different clamps that go on to the muffler itself. Um, there's an interior one and then an exterior one, um, and uh, just a matter of putting those on. Um, so I'm sort of checking off the things. I was I was working on the brake line there. Um, I'm getting ready to put the and actually start gluing stuff down because I I wound up getting some 3M90. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's a spray adhesive. Um, that actually works really well. Um, the little tiny tube that uh, is in front of the can spray can there is more of a liquid. Um, it's a little more runny, but uh, and it takes. Uh, I usually let it set up overnight if I use anything on that. Um, so I've only used that just sparingly. Um, basically, what I've been doing is is laying down the the, the leather 
on the, the side that I need to do the adhesive and you can see me with the, the white tube there. And then the um, uh, and then spraying both the both the leather, back side of the leather and the, the metal that I'm going to adhere it to so I've got sticky on both sides. Um, it's just a little challenging to get it to go just right. Um, you have probably a couple seconds to work with it before it's really starting to set up uh, when they make contact. And I bought a little roller to make sure that I get a nice uh, even connection of uh, both sides of the adhesive. Um, I, I'm sure there's some art projects out there that have that kind of same method to it. Um, the other part is is that when you get the joining uh, pieces, so I'm working on the back plate for the center console. Um, the question really is, it's like, well, do you trim the the material so that it's even with the edge, or do you wrap it around the edge and uh, sort of like wrap it like one side of a, a, a present or something like that? Um, I opted for wrapping it around the edge so the leather does cover all the way around. Um, the And then when I put it on there, I also overlaid it in such a way that the... Um, the the edges that join the center pieces, I just had to trim it back a little bit. So um, got that all squared away. And um, then I also put the uh, center seat belt attachments in and uh, riveted those together. So this is this is now uh, in the airplane at this point in time. Um, I it, I'm looking forward to being able to just put the seats in and give them a, give them a try actually in the airplane. Um, the, the side rails, uh, you're not supposed to put in until after, uh, you put the wings on and, uh, having helped, uh, a, a TSI builder, uh, fin do final assembly with his TSI. Um, I can guarantee you, you need to leave those side rails off because you just don't have the access that you need, uh, when you get to that point. So another dry fit on the side skins, just to make sure that everything uh, is lining up correctly. Um, it, I'm, I'm going to need to do a little bit more work to get those fit just right. And then I also wanted to check on the center uh, um, throttle quadrant here. Uh, because I'm doing uh, the Behringer brakes and wheels, uh, I've got some additional work that I'm going to have to do around that. Um, that will be probably in a later video. I'm getting close on that, but... Uh, Oh, and the other pieces, if you see that blue um, rod in there, that's the rod that connects the fuel selector down to the center stack that is custom made there. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, plenty more to come. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working on the engine and uh, this, the, the firewall forward more and hopefully have this thing uh, together here soon. Thanks for watching.